What's going on, you guys? It's The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Actually, for some of you, maybe this is the first time here, so welcome to the channel. So today, we're going over pretty much the day one how to set up a Flipper Zero. So every like six months or so, I try to redo everything on the beginner video because things change. So this video is gonna feature some brand new stuff I've never covered before on a starter video. This includes things like JavaScript, installing custom firmware using mobile, and installing apps using lab.flipper.net. I've even updated my repository of custom files for your SD card. I've heard your questions, so today we're gonna answer them. Let's go. All right, so first things first, if you got one of these, you're gonna need one of these, an SD card. I've got this super sick 64 gig SD card I got from Rabbit Labs. Now, do you need a 64 gig SD card? Absolutely not. It's completely overkill, but since the great folks over at Rabbit Labs sent one over, that's what I like to use, because I love supporting those guys. Now, really, you only need like a 16 gig SD card at most. There's not a lot of stuff you really got to put onto this thing. Just make sure you get one from a reputable company. Don't get one from AliExpress or anything because you could get some knockoffs and there have been problems. So yeah, we can just go ahead and take our SD card and plug it directly into the flipper. Keeping in mind that it goes kind of shiny side up. So this is the way. And then we're going to take that and just pop it in and make sure it's pushed in all the way. Helps to have a little fingernail, but yeah, make sure it's flush. If you did it properly, you'll see the screen that says all data will be saved to the SD card. Awesome. All right. So once you have the SD card inserted, what we have to do is update the firmware. Now, there are a ton of different ways to do this. I'm going to show you how to do it on mobile, desktop, and even on the flipper itself. But the first way we're going to do it is going to be on desktop. So take your flipper and then plug it into a USB-C cable. Now, it's super important to note is that not every USB-C cable carries data. Some of them are just power only. And if that's the case, it's not going to work for what we're trying to do here. If you have any questions, question whatsoever whether or not your cable carries data just use the one that came with the flipper because that one works every time and before we get into things too far please make sure to subscribe i know you may not even think about it i might pop up in your feed but it helps me out a ton so just click that subscribe button it means everything all right now that we're plugged in let's uh, go down to the desktop and get this thing done all right so we're going to start off on the official flipper zero website flipper zero dot one from here all you got to do is click on downloads and then you'll see update via pc so you can click on download for windows there's also Mac and Linux easy stuff there download it pops up on our desktop and just install it I've already done this so I don't need to install over anything but it's that simple so quick housekeeping we'll delete this and close this window then we'll just open up QFlipper and with any luck it'll connect and voila now QFlipper is a great program not just for installing firmware but also for managing the assets on the SD card this is going to be the main way of you know pulling files on and off of your flipper but let's get to updating for now now there are multiple versions of pretty much any firmware Whereas official firmware, custom firmware, all of them do the same thing. You'll notice that there's different update channels. We have release, release candidate, and development. Basically, release means the latest stable release. Everything's been pretty much tested over and over again, and it all works. The development build is kind of the latest and greatest, but it does not have the quality assurance that you get from the release candidates. So there may be some bugs here and there. I like playing with development builds, but later on, we're going to be installing apps using lab.flipper.net, and that means you have to use the release channel. So yeah, what we're going to do is just click the install button, hit update. Cool. So whenever you get a brand new Flipper Zero, we recommend that you do an update of official firmware first. What this does is it puts certain folders on the SD card and it makes sure everything's going to work going forward. So best practice is to install the official firmware update first and foremost. Now, while that's installing, let's talk about custom firmware because everybody always has questions about it. Now, custom firmwares basically add additional features to the Flipper Zero, more apps, more files, and in some cases, completely different menu structures. Now, what's cool with that is it lets other developers pretty much put their own touch on the Flipper Zero and unlock some completely different possibilities. Now, we typically recommend that you at least use the official firmware for a while just to kind of get used to it, figure out how everything works so that when you do install custom firmware, you'll know the difference. And then people always ask me, what's the best custom firmware? Now that question is virtually impossible. I'm personally using Momentum custom firmware at the moment, but it's like asking somebody what's the best car. It's a super subjective question. So try them all, see what you like. There's no harm in it. You can flash back and forth as many times as you want to. Super quick, super easy. Hey, and it looks like we're done already. Fantastic. So from here, if you were to say want to install custom firmware, let me show you kind of the most basic way of installing custom firmware. So this is pretty much how we did everything back before we had all the web flashers. And I'll show you those later, but I think it's important to show you how to install things the old fashioned way. So today for custom firmware, I'm going to be installing 
momentum custom firmware. Those guys over there are awesome. The devs are great. Also, make sure to give them a star on GitHub. Those guys definitely deserve it. So all we're gonna do is actually scroll down until we get to the releases, click on the releases, and then we're gonna download the QFlipper package right here. It's the TGZ. Go ahead and download that to our desktop, and then we can install it no problem. If we fire back up to QFlipper right here, we can go to install from file, and then select that file right there. And then it's gonna install it from file. It's that easy. Now I'm gonna install this using the web flasher later. So I'm gonna hit cancel, but let me show you one other cool way to do this. If we go into the SD card right here, there's a folder called update. If there's not, you can just make a folder called update. It doesn't matter. And then yeah, you can see all the different custom firmwares I already have on my flipper. So all you have to do is drag and drop into this folder, upload, it says it's too large. It always says it's too large. Nobody cares, it's fine. And just give it a second. It'll get itself uploaded there we go and we're done so from here what we can do if we press the little i button again is we can control the flipper directly in q flipper so if you press down it's going to open up what's known as the browser you press over there we go now you can see all of the folders and files inside the sd card itself if we open the update folder all we have to do is go to any of these folders i've got way too many in here and if we navigate down to this update file, run an app, and this will update to whatever firmware you want. So now you can flash between different custom firmwares on the go. Super, super cool. So let's go ahead and back out of this because we don't want to install that right now. But what we do want to do is make sure that we have our Bluetooth enabled because I'm going to show you how to install custom firmware or normal firmware directly on your phone. So let's go into settings down here and make sure that we have Bluetooth enabled. So here's Bluetooth and turn that on. Very important. And we can back out here and yeah, we're ready to get to mobile. All right, so from there, all you gotta do is download the QFlipper app. I mean, it works for Android, iOS, it's really easy. And then pair your flipper to it. Super simple, just follow the instructions. Okay, so this is what everything looks like right here. You can see that you have, I have no updates because we just updated it, but you also have the option of installing a custom firmware, which is really cool. If we click on the update channel, we can change from release to custom. Super simple, super easy. Now, where do you get the custom firmware from? The same place it was last time. So if we hop on over to Momentum's GitHub, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, whoop, oh, too far, most of the way down to the bottom, you'll see releases. If you click on releases, just like we did on PC, you can go and download the QFlipper package, the TZG. The TGZ, I said it right. It already says I have it downloaded, no problem. But yeah, if you want to install that way, it's super simple. Let's pull the app back up because you'll also notice that there is a hub down here. It's not the hub you're thinking of. Get your mind out of the gutter. Here we have the custom app hub. So with that, if we open that, we can install all sorts of great applications directly from the phone. Now, I could show you how to use it on the phone, but it's small and kind of clunky. I'll show you how to do it on the desktop. So let's go back. All right, so now that we're back down on the desktop, we're gonna go ahead and close QFlipper, very important. Using lab.flipper.net or using any of the web flashes for custom firmware, if you have QFlipper open, it's not gonna work, so close it. So here we are over in lab.flipper.net, another extremely good resource. So if you've never been there before, check it out, it's a lot of fun. And you can actually install firmware directly from here. We have the same thing, release, release candidate, development but what i'm here to show you is actually the app store so the app store whatever we're calling it it has apps in it so this is where you can download all of the cool apps that are for the flipper zero now this isn't everything these are only the ones that have been submitted to the lab.flipper.net team and they pass their checks so basically that means anything that's in here should pretty much work really well now for the sake of this video i'm going to download marauder m-a-r-a-u-d-e-r -E this is an app written by coco code aka OX Chocolate that uses the Wi-Fi Marauder firmware that we're going to flash onto the Wi-Fi board in a second. Now, Just Call Me Coco makes an ESP32 Wi-Fi device called the ESP32 Marauder. Well, what people learned that they could do was actually take that code and flash it directly to the Flipper Zero Wi-Fi board and then use all of the same features of Wi-Fi Marauder directly on the Flipper. It is so cool. So you're definitely going to want this app. All you got to do is click the install button and guess what? It's going to install directly to the Flipper. You don't have to do anything else. The app store on lab.flipper.net is absolutely amazing. I can't believe I haven't showed this off before.
I highly recommend just going through and checking out all the cool apps in there. They have little categories. You can go through games. I mean, just go nuts with this. Install anything you want to, keeping in mind that all these files are super, super small. So even if you only have a 16 gig SD card, you could probably install everything on here and still have more space. All right, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to install custom firmware using a web flasher, which is by far the easiest way to do it. So make sure you close lab.flipper.net. Can't have two of these things open at the same time and mosey on over to momentum-fw.dev. Right up here on top, you can click the install button. Also hop into their discord. There's a bunch of amazing people there. I am Yapper. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. So yeah, just click the install button and it's going to do just like lab.flipper.net, but we can install our custom firmware directly from here, which is so cool. Now I like to have the latest and greatest firmware. So we're going to switch to dev build. Now, the thing to know is that now we no longer have access to lab.flipper.net's app store, but since Momentum has every single app I care about, it doesn't matter to me. It's going to install everything for me. So just click the flash button and yeah, let it do its thing. Now this is going to take noticeably longer than the normal Flipper updates. This is normal. What's going on is that there's so many more apps, so much more stuff on these custom firmwares. It takes a bit longer to install. Just be patient. It'll get there. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey, would you have a look at that? It's done already. It's that simple. It's that easy. And actually, if we close this and then reopen QFlipper, you can actually see for yourself how much different this actually is. So yeah, we'll click the button. And yeah, now we have the brand new Momentum firmware. So one of the cool things about all the custom firmware is it's a great way of basically showing a little bit of different personality. You'll notice all the way down to the menus are there so many cool different things. Actually, they added their own little custom settings right here. You can change the interface. Like, look, if I go to graphics, I can change it from momentum to watchdogs. So if we do that and just go back out of here, back out of here, we'll notice that everything's different. The animations are different. They even changed the fonts up here. Super cool. I happen to like the default one. So let's go back over to our momentum settings, interface, graphics. We're going to switch back over to momentum. Bam. Reloading asset pack. We're back here. Huge shout out to Curanons for making all these amazing assets. I mean, check us out. This is so cool. And that's Yapper, which is me. Man, I love me a web flasher. It makes things so easy. Almost as easy as this segue to today's sponsor, PCBWay. Ever wonder where all these crazy add on GPIO boards come from? Well, it all starts off with an idea and a design. And that's where PCBWay comes in. They'll take your idea and your design and make it a reality. Not only that, but they will take care of you every step along the way, making sure it's as easy as possible for you to make any great creation. They can help you with PCB design, assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabricating. They do so much cool stuff. And beyond that too, they have an entire module store full of super cool stuff. I've been recently getting into Laura for long range communications and they've got a whole bunch of great modules right on the store. Those guys have been nothing but fantastic on every single project that I've worked with them on. So head on over to PCBWay.com to get a free instant quote. As always, thank you so much PCBWay for your continued support. Let's get back at it. All right, so now that we have the firmware sorted out, all we have to do is add some more files to the flipper so that we can actually do a lot more stuff with it. So if we head down to the desktop, I'll show you how to do it. So here we are at my GitHub. I actually created a repository that has all the files that you need linked down below. It's important to note that I actually got all these files from Uber Guidos. He is the OG when it comes to hoarding files for Flipper Zero. However, we'll notice if we scroll down through here, there's a lot of stuff in here that we really don't need to put directly on the Flipper Zero. He's got all sorts of great stuff, but again, GPIO, when we look at this, it's just documentation. We don't need that on our Flipper. So I went through and I deleted everything that we don't need. So there's two ways of getting this. Basically, you can click on the code and go to download zip and it will save a zip to the desktop and then you can decompress that manually. It takes kind of a long time and I'm lazy, so there's a better way. So what you can also do is go to desktop.github.com and download GitHub Desktop. All right, so once you have GitHub Desktop installed, all you gotta do from there is click on the little carrot next to code and then copy this URL. You can just click that little button, open up GitHub Desktop, go to file, clone repository, and then you can just paste it right here. Click on URL and paste. Right now it says you can only clone to empty folders. That's fine because I'm actually in a non-empty folder. Desktop slash SD files and just click clone and it will download all the files without having to decompress them. It's way faster. Now, obviously I already have the files so I can close out of all this because 
Of course, since I have the repository, I have all the files already. So this step is definitely recommended. Instead of trying to use QFlipper to move all those files over, take the SD card completely out of the flipper and then pop it into like an SD card adapter and plug it directly into your computer. It's gonna save you a ton of time. There's a lot of files we're moving today. So if you don't want it to take forever, use an SD card adapter and plug it into the computer. All right, so we'll go ahead and plug in our SD card in a second, that'll pop up. Here we are. Now I happen to have a lot of stuff on the SD card already of this flipper. If you don't see all these files on there, don't worry, you don't need to. I've got, again, a bit of a mess. So all we're gonna do is click on all these files. We don't need .git. We don't need any of these down here. We're gonna take that, drag and drop into an empty space. Don't do it into a folder, do it into an empty space. And yeah, it should start moving all of our folders over. Just give it some time. It'll do everything on its own. Now for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna wait 24 minutes for all of this to get done. You should do this if you wanna have everything. I'm talking all of the IR remotes, all of the sub gigahertz commands, all this cool stuff. I'll show you how it works, but I'm not gonna wait the 24 minutes. You can do that on your own. All right, so now that we got all our files going, all we gotta do is take our flipper and put our SD card back in it. And then I can show you how all this stuff works. Let's go through some stuff real quick so we know what's going on. So we've got sub gigahertz. What sub gigahertz is, is basically copying signals from things like sub gigahertz remotes. This could be gates, it could be lights, all sorts of cool stuff. We have 125 kilohertz RFID. It's for reading things like those little implanted chips for pets. It's super cool. Then we have NFC. This reads things like NFC cards. Here, actually, I can show you. So I have this super cool NFC card I got from Bill and I uses my Wi-Fi. And if I go ahead and use the flipper and scan it with the NFC app, you can see what happens. It makes a cool little sound and it reads and it shows it's an NTAG 123 card. Now there's a ton of other cool stuff you can do with NFC, but this video is long enough as it is. So let's get to other stuff on the flipper. Yeah, we can back out of that. That's NFC for you. Pretty cool, pretty fun. And let's see what else we have. We have IR, so we have infrared, which controls all sorts of stuff. The reason why we downloaded all those files, because now we have saved remotes. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. This is just the ones that I added manually, but yeah, you can control a lot of stuff. Be super careful. Don't use this on the projectors at school. You will get expelled. I've seen it happen over and over again. It is not a joke. They will kick you out of school. Don't do it. Now we have GPIO, which is pretty simple. It's for using like UART bridges and things like that. It's a little bit more advanced for day one stuff, but you can do a lot with that. There's also I button. These are used a lot more outside of the United States. I haven't seen a ton of them, but you can control I button stuff, which is pretty cool. Bad keyboard. So Momentum firmware uses bad USB and bad keyboard interchangeably. Just keep that in mind. And if you open the app, it will kill your connection to QFlipper. So let's not do that let me back out of there again so we can get our screen back whoopsie forgot about that hey we're back and we have mail what does that mean we've leveled up that's awesome that's actually really fun to get to show you new level okay all right, so this is where your applications live. This is where the settings are, and this is where the custom firmware settings are. The custom firmwares have their completely own firmware settings, which allow you to change things like the assets like we showed you earlier. You have universal two-factor, so basically you can use this as a hardware key for some low security stuff. It doesn't work as a two-factor for Windows, though, because that's a whole different license that I'm pretty sure they didn't get. So what's really cool is that bad keyboard is effectively the same as bad USB, but what bad USB does is it runs a script on a computer that this thing's plugged into and it can run a payload. What's cool is that they've actually added JavaScript support. So let me show you this. Let's go over to apps. Let's go down to scripts. And then we can see we have some JavaScripts. Well, if you downloaded the files from me, you've got this really cool payload from Gas Station Hot Dog. We get all the way down here. Here's the Windows XFIL script. This thing is super cool. Now, if we run this script, we'll notice that it's going to disconnect QFlipper and then it's going to pull up PowerShell. What it's doing now is it's basically running a payload but in JavaScript, which makes it a lot more powerful. This thing is super, super cool. And as soon as the payload's done, it's gonna close the PowerShell window and it's gonna open up this window right here. Very, very fun. Now, right now, what we're looking at is actually the flipper itself. This is internal storage. So if we open this file up, we'll see all of this information, including down here, my profile name and password for my Wi-Fi. That's absolutely crazy. What's also cool is if we close this, if we just disconnect our flipper right now, it actually closes that window. So I could have just, you know, ran over, popped this into the USB, run the JavaScript, and then just dipped out. It's that simple. It's such a cool script. All right, so we got all this cool stuff done, but there's one more thing left to do. I assume you have a Wi-Fi dev board just like this one. This is the one from original firmware. It just got a cool case I printed. If you don't have one, get one, because this thing is awesome. However, when it comes straight out of the box, it has a firmware called Blackmagic. It's basically a wireless debugging tool, which is useful if you know how to use it. But if you're not doing firmware development, it's got no use to you. 
what we're gonna do is put Wi-Fi Marauder on it and it's gonna open up a whole bunch of stuff. Definitely make sure to check out my video on hacking Wi-Fi with Flipper Zero. It uses the Wi-Fi Marauder firmware. So the first way I'm gonna show you is using an online web flasher called FZ Flasher. Basically that flasher is super good and it works for official firmware. So if you're running official firmware, we're gonna do it this way and you're gonna use FZ Flasher. Back down to the desktop. All right, so here is fzflasher.com. Again, link down below. And this is what we're gonna use to flash our board. Now there actually is one thing to show you because when we plug in our Wi-Fi board, we need to make sure we hold the boot button down. So let me hop over to the other camera real quick. I'll show you how to do that too. All right, so here's my board. It's actually got labeled a boot and reset button, but all we have to do is hold the boot button right here as we're plugging in our USB cable, just like that. Boom, what that's gonna do, it's gonna put us in a DFU mode, which is gonna allow us to actually flash with it. So once you've done that and everything's plugged in, we can go back to the flasher. All right, so we can just go ahead and click the connect button. And it sees two things right here. I always am a little bit gun shy because I have a bunch of ESP based things plugged into my computer. So I'll actually unplug this real quick. Okay, so it's not 17. I'm gonna press and hold the boot button again, plug this back in, ESP32 S2 on COM11. Just go ahead and click connect. And it's working fantastic. So now it's going to ask you to select the board. So there's all these different boards. So if you bought an aftermarket board from any of these guys, guess what? You can flash it here just like everything else. They even included me on here on a board that you will never, ever get your hands on because I made like two of them. So this is the original flipper board. So we're just going to go to flipper dev board. We're going to select version latest and the firmware is going to be Marauder. All you got to do is click program and guess what? Flashing in progress. It's super quick, super easy. Literally can't be any simpler. We'll be right back. Flashing success. So if you're using official firmware and you want to use Wi-Fi Marauder app that we downloaded earlier, you're ready to go. Your board is set and ready to go. Now, remember that I said that Momentum and XFW and some of the other custom firmwares, they actually require you to run a slightly different firmware on your Wi-Fi dev board. So you may be wondering, how do I get that firmware? Where? Super, super easy. We're just gonna plug it in. It's that simple. Plug it right in here. And all we're gonna do from here is actually run a flasher app that's already in the flipper. So let's hop back down to the desktop and I'll show you how to do that. Here we are back down on QFlipper. So we're gonna go ahead and open up apps and then it's under GPIO. And then we're gonna go down to ESP Flasher. Now this is a special flasher that's gonna flash a special version of the firmware that's gonna work specifically for momentum. So we're gonna go ahead and flash and you don't have to do anything. You don't even have to press a button. This thing's super simple and easy. I love it. One week later. And we're done already. If you see this fails amount SD card, SD card not supported, do not worry about that whatsoever. It happens every time you install it basically it just means that my wi-fi board does not have an sd card installed to it which it doesn't however it's just going to save the files directly to the flipper yeah. zeros sd card so you don't have to worry about it so we're going to find out if this thing works so all we're going to do is go back here and then we can go down whoops go back again go down to wi-fi and we're going to find esp32 marauder here's wi-fi and Wi-Fi Marauder. Make sure you're running the Wi-Fi Marauder for ESP32, not for Mayhem. Mayhem's a different board. So if we open this up and just go to scan, we should start seeing access points pop up. Boom, it's working just fine. Everything's working. Quit out of this. Now, if you wanna learn more about the Marauder app, I've got a video specifically on Marauder. And I also have, as I mentioned before, my video on hacking Wi-Fi passwords with the Flipper Zero. It's got way more information that we don't need to go over right now. Man, that seems like kind of a lot, but that's all you need to know to get the Flipper Zero up and running. But now you've got all the tools you'll need to get started with Flipper Zero. Plus, now you can flash firmwares on the go and do pretty much anything you want. Are there any other topics you want me to cover? Leave a comment down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It helps me out a ton. You guys are the best. We'll catch you next time.